Let's bring in a member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force FDA Commissioner, Dr. Stephen Hahn. Welcome this morning. The president said with the testing in place, we show cases 99% of which are totally harmless. He said this last night. That is a stunning statement. Do you have any evidence that is an accurate statement? Well, let's talk about where we are right now. We're seeing cases across the Sun Belt. Um, we're seeing, in some cases, the situation where it's in people who are less than 35. So it's a little bit different situation than what we had uh, back in March and April. Um, we are for, certainly concerned at the White House Corona Task Force about this. You saw the vice president go out to those three states last week where we've reached out, trying to find out what are the supplies, what are the resources that are needed. And we've sent teams into those states to actually help with um, taking care of the patients who are now with COVID-19. I, I want to ask you again, Dr. Hahn. The president said we show cases, 99 percent of which are totally harmless. We have more than 129,000 dead and more than 2.8 million cases. How many cases would you say are harmless? Well, what I'd say is, you know, any case um, we don't want to have in this country. Um, this is a very rapidly moving um, epidemic, a, a rapidly moving pandemic, and um, any death, any case um, is tragic, um, and we want to do everything we can to prevent that. What I would say to the American people is follow the guidance of the CDC, follow the protocols of the local and state governments, wear a mask if you can't socially distance, or if the local procedure is to wear a mask at all times, socially distant, hand sanitation, and protect the vulnerable. That's how we're going to get out of this. That's how we're going to further flatten. That's how we're going to stop this rising number of cases in the Sun Belt. And Dr. Hahn, President Trump tweeted this weekend that we are getting close to fighting our way out of the virus. What evidence do you see of that, given what you know and what you just heard from the mayors of those hotspots? So first of all, you know, my heart, I'm a frontline or was a frontline practicing doctor about seven, eight months ago. So. You know, my well wishes and hearts go out to those on the front line taking care of these patients. Um, and we are aware of these, these rising number of cases, particularly in the Sun Belt. But we are in a fundamentally different place now than we were in March and April. And let me just give you an example regarding therapeutics. We now have tools for those providers to actually use remdesivir, steroids. Um, and let me tell you also about convalescent plasma, because that is a treatment that we're looking at across the country. More than 28,000 Americans have received it. That's where you take the plasma from someone who's recovered and give that natural immunity to someone who is currently sick. Um, we're looking at whether that's effective or not. It appears to be safe. And one thing I'd like, again, to tell um, your, your viewing public, um, if you've been, uh, if you've had COVID-19, you have an opportunity to give back by contacting your Red Cross, by contacting a local plasma center and, and donating. Um, it could save a life. And, and doctor, I want to turn to vaccines. The president also claimed last night that a therapeutic and or vaccine will be around long before the end of the year. Is that true? And if so, based on what? So I just mentioned about the therapeutics that are available. We have a very robust pipeline. FDA oversees 141 clinical trials currently of therapeutics, of treatments for COVID-19. Well, so that pipeline is very robust. Let, let's move to vaccines. What do you okay. see in the future for vaccines before the end of the year? I can't predict. I can't predict when a vaccine will be available. And I just want to tell you about FDA's role in this. Yes, we are seeing unprecedented speed for the development of a vaccine. But as you know, Martha, we issued guidance this past week about vaccine development because we want to be very clear. Our solemn promise to the American people is that we will make a decision based upon the data and science on a vaccine with respect to the safety and effectiveness of that vaccine. That's something that's an FDA core responsibility. When those data become available, and I hope those data are available sooner rather than later, we will make that judgment based upon those data and that science. And, and Doctor, a recent ABC Washington Post poll shows 27 percent of people are unlikely to accept a free coronavirus vaccine. What happens if a sizable number of people refuse to get a vaccine? It is a sizable number, and, and it is concerning. And, of course, the issue of vaccines in this country has, has been around for a number of years. 
What I can say is one of the reasons, one of the major reasons we issued this guidance was we wanted to give clarity about what we were going to look at, what we needed to look at, and that FDA, the nation's FDA, has incredible scientific expertise, and we will do our job to assess the safety and the efficacy of a vaccine candidate. I want to assure the American people of that and provide confidence that we're on the job. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Dr. Hahn, I always appreciate your time. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.